Hey, it's Lisa again, and I think I've got this epoxy thing licked. Um, I've done a couple of other things using the finger application method, but I am using a finger cot, which is very thin, but it still protects your finger. But I'm able to feel the surface a lot better. Also, what I did is I mixed my stuff in this little cup and I went ahead and I, like I did before where I did, you know, half and half, but um, just did them all in this cup, mixed it up really good until it started turning clear again and then let it sit. Uh, I would say anywhere from five to ten minutes. When you feel this starting to get warm, which means it's starting to harden, then you apply it. And you can see it is just a glass finish. Very little bubbles. Very little pits or hardly any dimples. I think there's a kind of a ridge up here because uh, since I'm using my finger, I had to get, you know, real close to that edge right there and I'll clean that up when the when this cup is done and you also probably notice that I have supported the end of my cup this will not if you can see watch it for a little while it does not jump you don't hear that grinding noise I don't have the metal shavings down here below the mo motor anymore so that's got to be the solution to it if you think about it and I've mentioned this before when you put a rotisserie in a grill you are going to have it attached at both ends um, even though you may not think that these cups weigh that much and of course I've got the little nerf football inside um, it's still it's still heavy down at this end and I think that's why it works itself out and it also slips inside the motor here and causes those little shavings but this is smooth rotation and uh, this is the first cup I've done with the uh, supported end now last night I did this bottle and if I can get it over here into the light you can see that it is like glass it is very very smooth this did not go on the rotisserie because I haven't figured out how to do that yet I will though um, this of course is a dip Put my initials on it now story about this bottle if you have a dirt cheap store near you and I do here in Allen Texas I got the four of these bottles for 36 cents a piece um, they're regularly $14.99 um, there's the brand name and one of them was marked, you know, it's usually 80% off. These probably would have cost me $3. And um, I actually messed one up. I did another dip and the paint just, it just totally uh, clumped up and everything. I think the water was too warm for it. But um, I did this bottle. Another canister or another big bottle like this. This is the second one I've done with this shimmer paint. The first one I did right down there at the bottom, it got a big ding in it. And I tried to cover it up with a decal and it just looked horrible. So it's sitting upstairs. I'll just use it upstairs. But once again, if I can turn it here, look at how smooth that is. There are still a few couple dimples or bubbles but I can live with that. This is so much better 
letting this epoxy sit a little bit and it really kind of you know starts to turn a little bit thicker and to me that's easier to apply especially if you're getting up around you know the edge of your paint but you don't want to have uh, any epoxy on the rim or clear places that you have here um, this one I tried to redo again and you can see that was a disaster I'm really frustrated with this one um, there is hope though because you can sand this down and reapply the epoxy which I've already done once but then it started to get a couple of dimples up in here and of course now you know this is my bottle so I don't care well I do but you know there's nothing I can do about it but I'm definitely sticking with this method now another method that was discussed and the Facebook page is called DIY Tumblers. Um, hundreds of suggestions, hundreds of pictures, uh, things that go wrong, things on how you can fix it. Just if you're really wanting to get into doing these tumblers, you need to go to that Facebook page and join if you can. It's a group. Um, and it's for just... Uh, painting no powder coat they don't want any powder coat people on there because it's a it's you're not going to have these kind of problems if with powder coat you know epoxy uh problems and so forth like that because powder coat goes on so much smoother but one gentleman or person i'm not sure exactly who um has has kind of published another technique where you um, paint your item, bake it from 150 to 200 degrees for 45 minutes. Now I bought a toaster oven for $5.40 at Salvation Army, turned it on its side, and it's tall enough to put items in. Um, here's a bottle that I've done for the 4th of July. Uh, spray painted it all white, then used shimmer paint for the top and the bottom, um, left the middle white, and then blast, just did a real short blast of um, glitter, silver glitter, uh, baked it for 45 minutes, 150 to 200 degrees. Then I coated it with Rust-Oleum 2X Clear Coat baked it for 10 minutes at the same temperature 150 200 degrees then i'm going to put my decals on it spray it again with 2x bake it again for two or two, 10 minutes 150 200 degrees and that's it and you can already see how glossy some of this is i, I probably did I, I may go ahead and do another coat of 2x um, and bake it before I put the decals on because I don't think I got quite enough here in the middle. This is another one of my 36 cents bottles. The, um, I think the reason why this one was marked $1.79 first and then he marked it down even more than that is because the, um, the uh, thing is, is broken off of it. These have a top on them. This is attached. It's weld. It's got a welded ring on it. This is the one that I dipped it. You can see I tried to dip it, dip it, and it just curdled and puckered and clumped and everything else. So what I did with this one, and I'm I'm mad because that's a waste of paint to me, but I just took a razor blade scraper, scraped it off really good, and then went over it kind of wet sanded it down with some scotch brights bright in the grain direction of the grain of the stainless steel and it took me about I don't even think half an hour to clean this up so that I can go and paint it again so I will make a second attempt at that um, like I said I think the the water in the bucket was too warm um, I think it works better if it's just a little bit cool 
Uh, you'd probably want to warm it up if you're doing it in the winter time, but I don't think so. I don't know. I'm not going to do that one again. Pong. Well, there's a dent. So anyway, I really believe that supporting the end of these cups on these rotisseries is the way to go. Um, I mean, it's not going anywhere. I mean, I've seen people say, oh, it's falling off the rotisserie. You know, it worked itself out of the hole over here at the, at the motor. I don't think that's going to happen here. So, anyway, um, if I get any more tips, I will definitely post them. But so far, this is working great. Now, for the baking one, if you're just doing this, you know, painting and putting decals on, that's the way to go. I don't think that this method of baking is going to be great for doing uh, glitter cups. Uh, I haven't seen anybody try to do them yet on that Facebook page. Um, nobody's mentioned it, but I just don't think. I think epoxy, the two-part epoxy is the way to go with uh, the glitter. And I've had a lot of people post, I've seen a lot of people post that they epoxy, wet sand, and then epoxy again. Because that smooths down the glitter so you don't get that orange peel uh, effect that some people are doing so um, if I do one of those again I will definitely let you know oh I almost forgot this is a galaxy mug that I'm doing and I will probably do it on the um, baking method I've got some decals I'm gonna stick on here like I'm gonna stick a moon or a planet over that star effect um, we'll see. Anyway, y'all enjoy your day, and we'll get back to you with more tips and chips as warranted. Bye!